Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna be inside of Blender, exploring one of the most exciting new updates and features, and that is the Geometry Node Editor. In last week's Patreon video, we actually covered creating a procedural asphalt shader, and while we were doing that, we were shading a sphere. And that gave me an idea for this week's video, and that is to create this procedural, uh, kind of mini ecosystem or tiny planet using the Blender Geometry Nodes. And if you're interested for the clouds in this tutorial, you can go to my website in the link below for some very, very high quality VBD files. So like in most 3D scenes, it really starts off with the basic lighting and blocking out. Since we're gonna be rendering primarily a sphere, it's really simple where you just have a sphere right there. Um, I'm gonna punch shift A, I'm gonna start adding in an area light. So we're just gonna pull this area light up right here. That seems good. And another thing I always like to do is add object constraint in track two. We're gonna track this area light to our sphere. And now it's lighting our sphere. Another thing you wanna make sure you're doing is going to your world settings and we're just gonna change our background to complete black right there. Um, we're gonna also add in a volume shader. So we'll search a principal volume. Now that our principal volume is added, I'm gonna go ahead and drop our density down to something pretty low. So 0 0.005 is good. And we're gonna go over to our light right here, which I'm gonna drag under our light settings and our light collection. And I'm gonna click right here and let's just turn the power up a bit on this light. A thousand watts seems pretty good to start with. Um, just for rendering sake, I'm gonna take out this principal volume. I really wanna do is I really want some softer shadows. So that means a bigger light. We're gonna click on our light and push scale. You can see how that Terminator starts to soften up. And then we also have this plane on the ground. And this is a big, big deal right here that people don't realize is uh, how colors and uh, textures really bounce light around. So right now our base color is white. And you can see we have this big white shadow right here. Well, if we take this base color to black, all that fill light goes in. Um, we could just add a light down there too and adjust that. I like the bounce light. Um, you know, it's probably making it render a little bit slower, but that's just what I'm gonna stick with for now. If you want to go ahead and add a light down there, that way it's shooting photons directly from the camera, bouncing on the sphere and the light versus bouncing around the scene. Something to just keep in mind for render settings or render speed. I want to make a quick point about normals before we quickly jump into the geometry nodes. So now that we're inside the geometry node, by the way, if you don't have this popped up, just go and click add right there. We're gonna work on combining the cylinder uh, with the sphere and projecting it on the normals. And I'll explain what I mean right now. Um, so we're gonna be using these geometry nodes. We're gonna be instancing on points. We're gonna find a distribute points on face. So we're gonna search that. We'll drop that in right here. We're gonna take the original geometry and join it with our distribute points on face. So we'll pull this out right here and we'll search join geometry. Right there, we'll pop that in right there. And we'll just plug this into here and we'll take our points and put them on our geometry. So now we wanna instance these points. So we're gonna search for instancing points. We'll have our instance on points, drop that in right there. So now we have our points plugged into our points and now we need our instance. We have our cylinder here under a collection. So we're gonna take that collection, drag it in. We're gonna get our geometry from the collection. We're gonna click instance right there. Awesome. If we had multiple types of geometry, we'd want to click separate children and reset children. Um, however, I've already scaled this correctly. So I'm not gonna click reset children. That's just if you want to change the scale. Our cylinders are all pointing up and down and this is where our normals come in. So real quick, if you wanna see your normals in Blender, you wanna go over to your filter right here and then click normals. And then once we have our normal selected, we're gonna change the size up some. And you can see we want all of these little points to be shooting off the normals like that. So what we need to do to have that done is we need to take our normal right here and we need to align this right here to our normals. So in order to do that, let's tab out of edit mode, punch shift A, search, and then we need to align a Euler to vector. We're gonna take our normals, plug that into our vector, and now we're gonna add a vector, vector math right here. We'll take our rotation, plug that into the top, and then we'll take our vector and plug that into our original rotation. So you'll see that's done something, but that's not correct. We could try messing around with this addition right here and try to get them pointed somewhat in the same area, which this is actually giving us some pretty cool effects. Uh, I really like that. 
But uh, what we really need to do is just change our line Euler to vector to our Z location. And it's going to be different depending on how your object is oriented. So um, I'm orienting mine towards Z, and that works perfectly right there. Awesome. So now we have the basic structure for distributing these points. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to graph roughly four different types of plants, um, ranging from small to large. And this is going to color our ecosystem. Okay guys, so now that we have the Quixel plants in, um, all I did was just use Megascan's bridge, download a 4K resolution, you can go higher or lower depending on how detailed you wanna be. Um, and then what you do after that is you just export it using the bridge plugin, and then it's dropped into Blender right here. Now, unfortunately, um, there's a bug right now, and it's not working completely right. So you can see that the, uh, the alpha channel is not really working right. There's some inverted and uh, issues going on there. So what I wanna do is I'm just gonna uh, show you how to fix these materials or if you're making your own plant materials and using your own plant textures uh, and assets, I'm gonna show you how to uh, kind of set those materials up to be a little bit more realistic. If you're already happy with your plants, materials and assets, you can just go ahead and skip through this part right here. So getting a close up on this plant right here, you can see we have some pretty wacky stuff going on and this principled shader did not import correctly and that's totally fine um, because I'm gonna show you how to set it up and this is actually a pretty good opportunity for us to kind of learn and explore a little bit about texturing these plants realistically. Let's keep this color map right here. It's gonna be set to sRGB perfect. Next thing we have is our specular map. That is not correct. That went into subsurface or so bump that into specular. And then our glossiness, which for some reason is downloading glossies instead of roughness maps. Um, even though I have that change in the settings, we're going to take our glossy map right here and we're going to put that in our roughness and it's inverted. Good thing Quixel did that uh, because this is a roughness map. Awesome. We'll take our opacity right here. We're going to take that out of emission and we're going to put that in our alpha channel. Boom. There you go. It's already looking great. Uh, our normal map went into emission strength. We're going to put that into normal. Usually Quixel doesn't do this. I don't know why it's doing it on its plants. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's typically not like this. So it's looking interesting, but it's not quite looking realistic. And that's because real plants have some transmission or translucency. They're kind of paper thin, so some lights can be coming through. We don't really have any light coming through. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're taking this translucency and we're gonna create our own translucency shader. So let's go and search trans. So translucent BSDF. And look at that, color, color. Awesome. We can't plug this in anywhere over here because it's its own shader. So we're gonna click A, we're gonna click mix shader. We got our shader in right there. We'll drag this shader to here. And then we're gonna take this shader and drop it in right there. And we're gonna take our top shader and pop it onto surface over here. That's undone this alpha right here. And as you can see, there's no alpha channel here. I tried to find one, there's not. However, there is a workaround. So we're gonna be a little sneaky with this and I'll just show you to prove like if we take our translucency all the way down, it's just going to this top material. If we take it all the way up, it's going to this bottom material, which we're getting that glow finally that we're looking for, the light shining through, but uh, it's keeping uh, it's keeping the, uh, the old geometry there. And we don't really want that at all. So the trick for this is to add in a transparent shader. So let's go into our transparent shader right here. We're gonna drop that in right there. We're gonna take our original opacity and we're gonna do another mix shader. So just stick with me right here. So our mix shader like that. We're gonna drop our shader one in right there, our shader two in right here, and we're gonna mix it based off of this one's color. Looks great, but it's uh, inverted, so we're just gonna grab a invert node, and that's just because of the color of that specific map. And there we go. Um, so we went from something like this to something more like this. Uh, and we can mix them 50-50. Uh, I'm still having a little bit of issues with how this particular no. Oh, we need to turn the transmission all the way down. There we go. And that looks good. So now we kind of just find a happy medium of where we want it to mix. This is all going to be based off of your personal artistic taste. All right, that looks good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to our plants over here that we have selected, um, you know, some different variations and sizes, and I'm going to go fix all of their shaders and then we'll jump back and start scattering them on the planet. So we got our plant shaders finished. I jumped back into our uh, regular, uh, our just quick 
viewport update mode and we're going to jump right over to our geometry nodes and start scattering these plants around a bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take our first place right here, the wood sorrel. So we're going to do new collection and then I'm going to call this uh, collection. Uh, I'm just going to rename it ground one and uh, it's going to kind of work from one, two, three, four, all the way up to the taller plants. So this is our base base uh, plant right here, the base plant that we're scattering. And we want to scatter this all over our sphere. You can see there's a lot of little tiny just plants and variations in here. What I want to do with that is I actually want to break all this out. Uh, and if this is all one thing inside the collection, all one group, it's going to scatter it all together. And I don't want that. I want the variation that we're going to get. So I'm just going to drop that down, left click on this and just click delete. Now everything is going to scatter separately. and It's going to create a little bit more variation in the scene. So just keep in mind, we're just wanting to scatter the whole collection right there. To scatter the collection, we're gonna take our ground one, we're gonna drop it in right there, and then we're gonna add this into our geometry node network. Grab our collection intro, go to our, our collection info, go to geometry and click instance. And now we're instancing it over our geometry right there. There's density, so we can turn the density up, turn it down. Another thing I wanna do is I wanna separate children. Click pick instance. Um, and then you can see that going on right there. Now we can change our density based on this slider right here and kind of see everything coming in. Or we can use some noise and kind of create some different pockets of vegetation and not vegetation, which is what I really like doing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a noise texture, shift A search, and then let's go ahead and pull in noise texture. Take that noise texture, we'll drop it in right there. We'll add in a color ramp. We'll take the factor of our noise texture, plug it in right there. Let's go ahead and multiply it because I already know we're going to need to add. So let's do some math right here. Uh, just regular math. And this is why we're multiplying. I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug that into our density right there. So you can see we don't really have that much going on. We can mess with the scale. We can mess with the detail. We can mess with the roughness. It's not really doing much. We could try to clamp it down. But still, like, that's not enough to, you know, be scattered around sufficiently. So we want to go our math right here and we're going to do multiply and let's just increase the value by a thousand or a hundred to start off with. Okay. Let's undo this gradient. This gradient is going to help us kind of map this noise. I'm going to take our scale to 3.3 and I'm going to take our distortion up a little bit to kind of swirl it into groups. So to do that, we'll just take our multiply value and just keep bringing that up messing with the scale. Um, so now that we got that solved, we're going to add in some random scale. Right now, everything is the same scale on this. So we're going to put Shift A, Search, and then we're going to do Random Value. We're going to take our random value, plug it in on our scale, and make sure you are on float. That way, everything scales uniformly. Uh, we can take our min. Let's bring our min up some, 0.02 maybe. And then we can also max, miss with our max. Just change how that looks. So as you can see, if we drag the max up, it's going to start scaling bigger than what we uh, inten intentionally uh, intended for in the beginning. Uh, so I'm going to take that back to one right there. And yeah, now we have a lot more variation in size and scale, which means we can go back up to our multiply on our density and just make some more density in there. And this is starting to look really good. So now what we're going to do is we have our base structure laid out for scattering this geometry and scattering everything around and creating random variations. So I'm not going to record this part. We'll just do a time lapse for it. But we're going to um, we're going to do this for every single plant, and I'll just show you how you will set up the first one, and then you can do it for other things in plants. So you can also add rocks uh, and just different uh, sticks, debris on the ground, whatever you feel like doing. Um, I'm just doing it for the plants right now. So I'm going to take everything right here. I punch Control C, Control V, copy it down right there. I'm going to take our group. Uh, input right here, our group input, take this geometry, pull it down right here, add that to our mesh, and then instance on points, I'm going to take that out right here, and I'm going to add that to our geometry right there. Now we're instancing the same ground one, so we're going to make a new collection, and we want to take it out of that ground one collection, and we're going to call this ground two. Very creative here. Uh, and let's take our second largest plants, which are these, drop them into ground two, click on our sphere right here, take our ground two. Uh, we don't even have to drag it in, actually. You can just go ground one, delete, go here, and then ground two. 
And you have to remember for this to properly work, you want your uh, you want all your little plants to be outside of that collection object, and then they scatter on right here. And uh, that's looking really good. However, um, there's some stuff I don't want to do. There's some stuff I do want to change. We're going to take our noise texture right here, and we're going to mess with our scale a bit. We'll take it down maybe a little bit more, play with our detail, our roughness. We're just trying to create some variation right here. We have a very high value, which is a lot of plants, so we'll take that down to like 100. Uh, that's looking a little bit better right there already off the bat. So uh, we're gonna go through, do this with all the variations, and then set up our final lighting for the scene. So now that everything's finished, you can see right here, we've uh, added the four layers. Each one is a different collection, and I've kind of landed on this right here. Uh, and we'll go back to our main render right there. It's gonna load in. Uh, another thing I did is I added just a moss texture to the sphere because I didn't want to add more ground cover. I was pretty happy with how the ground cover looked. Uh, another thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add in some clouds. So I'm gonna pull some VBD cloud files from um, my own personal uh, cloud pack that I have for sale. If you want to, you can go check that out. I created and simulated those all inside of Houdini. Uh, it's like over six months of work on just clouds because I really wanted some high, high quality uh, cloud assets. So we're gonna be using those. Uh, feel free to go check them out on the website right now. We're gonna punch Shift A, and then we're gonna go into Add. And then if you don't want to use, uh, or you could add another VDV, and that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna Shift A, and we're gonna go to Volume. We're gonna import Open VDB file. So if you have our cloud pack, uh, I would recommend going to our abstract clouds right here. Uh, these are some really interesting clouds. So you can also open up a preview of these clouds right here. Um, so I'm just looking for something that has some volume to it. Um, this one's pretty interesting. I like how this one kind of has a little curve to it. This one too. Um, I believe this is cloud 10, yeah. So let's go ahead and load in cloud 10. Now, make sure you save your project file because Blender loves to crash with volume, so I'm just punching Control S for that. Uh, since it's Blender and it's kind of unstable with volumes, I'm gonna do our low resolution, which is 10 megabytes, so I'm gonna import that. It crashed. So we have our cloud imported right here, and now we can kind of just rotate it and position it however you want. Kind of make it look like uh, the planet's kind of being enveloped by these big storm clouds, so something like that looks pretty good. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. Uh, also just add a principal volume on and it works pretty well right off the bat. So I really like how that looks right there. We're gonna start off with just that and now it's really just a matter of rearranging our scene. So I'm gonna click on our light right here, our area light. I'm gonna go to our track too, make sure we're tracking to that sphere right there. Now we got that bright, bright, bright light right there. Uh, I'm gonna go to our world settings I'm gonna turn on our principal volume right there. Um, remember we added that at the very beginning. Just gonna add a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of a, uh, a volumetric and uh, depth to this. I'm gonna take that down a bit though. And we kind of have it enveloping it right there and that looks so good. Of course, Blender's gonna be a little slow on, uh, on pulling this volumetric out, but it looks great nevertheless. I'm gonna take this light right here and I'm gonna crank it up a little bit more. Um, we're at a thousand, let's try 3000. Don't be afraid to go too bright when it comes to stuff like this. So we'll go to three right there. And yeah, it's really helping this image come alive right here. We're getting this nice little wrap around. Um, I'm gonna pull it forward just a bit more. That way we get some light pulling around the side right here. Um, let's go ahead and take this volume right here. Maybe like right there. Looks pretty good. Remember, we can always play with the size of the floor too to control this bounce light. So if we bring it down like that, we're gonna get less bounce, which means less fill. Um, something like that looks pretty good right there. So guys, that concludes the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, you can go check out this cloud pack if you want to, and I'll just maximize this right here. Uh, and let it render out a little bit. You can go check out this cloud pack if you want to. You can go check out the Patreon for this project file. I'll include the clouds also uh, and the lighting and everything. So it's just set up, ready for to use and uh, to create your own tiny plants. So go check out the Patreon for this project file and more. I will see y'all next week. Uh, and if you're on the Patreon, we'll be launching a new video uh, this weekend. So guys, thank you so much. I hope to see you on the next one. Peace out.